Listen, shout out to Real Tune TV. And um, I want to say that this is one of the greatest interviews I've had in a very long time. If y'all been watching me on people platforms, it's been crazy. So I want to say this right genuinely. This gentleman was very professional, as y'all can see. Uh, one thing that I noticed, I said this when the camera was off, I'm going to say it while it's on. I noticed this because I have a 98% in English. I don't mean I'm smarter than nobody, but that means I understand structures. And if y'all know anything about how I do my lectures, I structure them. He had a very great structure of this interview. So I'm not going to give his formula up, but if y'all notice, the way we came out, or at least what I noticed, it was who I was. It's basically, if this was a book, he did the introduction. You ever read a book? The first, the part that everybody skip in the book is the intro about who the, the person is that wrote that book. So he gave me that. Allowed me to explain myself uh, via some of the issues that I had in the community that maybe my, people might not have heard my perspective. And then I was also able to drop a lot of information. So y'all got a lot out of this interview if you actually don't know who I am already. This gentleman, the way he did it and conducted it, I was able to pretty much give you my background in so many words. I was able to give you my past plights in so many words and clear up rumors that y'all may have heard and been turned off about me about that weren't true. And I was also able to drop information on ancient Egypt for the people. So he did a great job structuring this. This is a black man. I want to give him his guy. I'm all ready because he did a great guy uh, job. He ain't hassling and heckling nobody. I ain't shooting no shots at Vlad, but this was better than Vlad because Vlad be asking bullshit questions. And I don't mind going on Vlad, but this was way, conducted way better than Vlad. Y'all be showing Vlad love. Show him love too. Get him to a million followers too. He doing relevant that shit too on Real Tune TV. And I'll be back whenever you want me back. Hey, Real Tune, it's some real money in the room. For the people who don't know, man, let them know who we have in front of the camera. For those of you who don't know, and I want to give a special salute again, once again, to Real Tune TV. I appreciate any and everybody who allows me to uh, appear on a platform. Right. And um, if y'all been following me for years, you know I always give my absolute uh, and the utmost respect. Or excuse me, show the absolute and utmost respect. For those of you who don't know, I go by Young Pharaoh. Uh, also, Aden Nobunaga, a.k.a. General Aden. And with that being said... Um, I'm going to just give y'all, I ain't going to give y'all the short version. I'm going to give y'all the long version so y'all can know who I am and what I'm about. Now, um, I'm undefeated in debates publicly. I do say publicly because I've been debating before 2015, but just y'all didn't really know who I was until 2015. I'm undefeated in debates publicly since 2015, so that's going on almost 10 years. I'm 2-0 against Harvard. Um, I had a debate with a Harvard professor on the subject of Egypt, and they backed out. And I believe I had another debate with Harvard on the subject of the evolution theory, and they backed out. So by Ooh. them backing out, I'm counting them as losses. And with that being said, um, the reason for them backing out is because they said the, well, the professor wanted to debate me, but then the, the college told them to send, told me to send my premise in. And once I sent my premise in, I know for a fact he seen my stance and realized he couldn't beat me. So he said he don't want to debate somebody that's younger than him, aka he copped out. So I'm taking that as a two. I'm taking that as a win. Now with that being said, um, also. Uh, I run an online university. It's the number one black university in the world. It was number one on the App Store April 30th, 2021. It would have stayed number one if it wasn't sabotaged by, sadly, a black employee that I hired. And, um, you know, sometimes people do hate or jealous things, but it's okay. And with that being said, on that uh, university, I have over 1,000 hours of content that I myself have done the research on via a multi-million dollar library I have at my house. And this is real research. It's not regurgitated from anybody else. And not only have I done uh, a great job discovering past truths, but I've done a beyond job uh, discovering new information that nobody has ever discovered or come up with. Um, I have totally dissipated and debunked all religions in the world, including Hinduism as well. And I say that because nobody ever gets on Hinduism, but I got on that as well and show how it came from the Greeks and how the word Hindu is actually not Sanskrit. Uh, the word Hindu is actually Arabic and it means slave. And um, I consider myself today to be an Atenist, which is um, the way of life. I don't like to say religion because religion means religion to religion you to a Roman army. Religion, by definition, is a Roman army of 2,000 plus men and ain't none of us white. And with that being said, um, I'll say a way of life because Buddhism is considered a way of life. And Atenism is the Egyptian form of Buddhism. And it is the teaching that the Pharaoh Akhenaten attempted to bestow upon his people, which is why they like to slander him and say he's the weakest pharaoh, when really he was the strongest pharaoh. And um, I also tie uh, Egypt into Japan, 
through the migration of the Naga Kushites, Naga meaning God, Kushites meaning Kush, and um, you know, the gods from the land of Kush. And not only do the Mongoloid, aka the Asian people, um, confirm that they're descendants of Africanoid uh, genealogy, if you look into Buddhism or Shintoism, uh, the main deity there is the sun, just like Ra. So this is why this looks like the Japanese flag, because this is the Japanese flag. Just in Egypt, we would call it Ra or Aten. And in Japan, you know, they may just, you know, uh, refer to it via their, their uh, deity names in Japanese. And so, uh, also, I'm a fighter. I'm one in Noah Muay Thai, and I'm six and one in K1 uh, kickboxing. Uh, I've had the pleasure to meet with UFC fighters such as John Condonier, um, Abel Killer Trujillo. I've had conversations with Israel Adesanya. Um, I've had conversations with um, Liam Harrison, uh, Jonathan Haggerty, and I um, also got a shout out on the UFC from John uh, Condonier. Uh, I'm a self-made, I like to say holistic healer. I would also say doctor, but I don't feel like arguing with people about their titles, even though the Hippocratic Oath does come from Imhotep, so technically I could argue with a white man about if he's a legitimate doctor, but I'm not going to do that. So I'm just going to say I'm a holistic healer. I would like to say I am currently number, the, the number one holistic healer. I actually just saved my own life from being drugged by Rick Foss, Little Dirk, and um, Richard Booth. I actually just saved myself. So that proves that I'm a great healer. And also I'm the number one attorney in the world, okay? And um, if not the world, for sure the country. Uh, may you hand me that right there? This is just one of many of my works, which is printed out from my university, Aten University, A-T-E-N University.com. As you can see, I gave this presentation February 14, 2021, The Biden Family, Drugs, Pedophilia, and Criminal Secrets. And I have things in here that I won't show because I don't want to get this gentleman's fla channel flagged. But as you know, I've, as they know it, I've showed them even imagery of not just, and nobody in here is pedophiles, let me say that. But this is some of the content that was on Hunter Biden's laptop. And I've showed him, showed them content, not only of him having sex with his own daughter and underage, but either Obama's adopted daughter, because if you don't know, that's not Obama's real daughter. They're adopted, and if you don't know, Michelle Obama is really Michael Robinson, it's a tranny. And so with that being said, um, I'm the one that blew the lid off of Joe Biden. I'm the one that blew the lid off of the Wayfair human trafficking with George Soros, who owes me some money. And um, I'm the one that blew the lid off all of the elites. And uh, what else do I have in my portfolio here? I also brought my presentation I did on Jeffrey Epstein, him being Rasai, Israeli Messiah's biggest spy for over 30 years. I'm the one that exposed how the pu Buffalo, pu I mean, excuse me, how the uh, general public school systems via the McGraw Hill is actually ro owned by Robert Maxwell, who was the father of Gaslane Maxwell, who was the handler of Jeffrey Epstein, and I pretty much blew the lid on Epstein Island and all of the human trafficking that was going on. Um, I also have a complete, uh, we can call it a dossier. I got the dossier here on the Nation of Islam. I got a couple of them, but I only brought one. This one right here is about how Riza Islam is not actually a legitimate member of the Nation of Islam, but how he actually was a Scientologist and he didn't go to the Nation of Islam until he got caught scamming for, as you can see here, and the reason I have the Wikipedia printout is because LA Times deleted the article after I exposed it, so I printed this out. I got the, the paper edition. Um, in 2008, about 100 protesters gathered out the world, gathered outside of the World Literacy Crusade's office. And if you don't know the World Literacy Crusade, as you can see here, that I got a screenshot from this YouTube page, the World Literacy Crusade. This is Reza Islam when he was young. This was a branch off of the Church of Scientology. And so what he did was, when he was in LA, they were scamming people, uh, making them pay for housing vouchers for as much as $1,500, thinking they would be able to use them towards their rent, and the vouchers was fake. And then also he caught a case co committing medical fraud because he was running the black kid, the black high school kids, and I got his indictments and everything right here. And you can also check with a white man that I know named Jeffrey Augustine. Augustine, he, he know all about it as well. He was uh, committing medical fraud and then giving the Church of Scientology 10% of what they was making. So what he was doing was he was going through the, going to the black communities, him and his mother and his stepdad, Alfred e. Johnson, who was the biggest black ch uh, Scientologist in the history of the Church of Scientology. And what they was doing was they was going to black communities and get put, putting the kids on drug rehabilitation programs, the high schoolers who really didn't have drug prop programs. So they was telling the families, okay, this kid might be an alcoholic or whatever the case may be. And they putting them through a re rehabilitation program. But really what they was doing was they was putting them through Scientology programs 
and then um, they were falsifying medical needs that was not true in order to get money through the insurance and they was giving 10 percent of it to the church of scientology and then when he got knocked for that in order to come from up under that umbrella he went and became a member of the nation of islam and this is when now when you see farrakhan and all of these members of the noi pushing these scientology books and pushing all of these things uh, this is why, but that comes from Satanism. You know, no disrespect to the Church of Scientology, but the cross of the Church of Scientology is the Rosicrucian cross, which is a satanic cross. And the mind programs that they got come from Aleister Crowley, who, was, who if not was the, is one of the biggest Satanists in the world. He was involved in over 150 child sacrifices where he would actually cut the skulls off children and drink blood right out of the skulls. So the Church of Scientology is not somebody that I sure one my kids learning anything from and I'm pretty sure black people wouldn't want their kids learning anything from them as well and that's why you need to know who it is you're dealing with before you deal with them. I've heard uh, a few of Reese's interviews you know what I'm saying what I've gathered from him as far as when it's disease you know he's anti-government you know what I'm saying you're anti-government right. you know um, like it, it just seems like I, I sense genuineness from him and want to help and wanting to help the community, he also goes by Risa Islam. So, like, if you put Islam in the back of your name, that's like, you know, you standing on Islam. And so, I guess my question is, what's wrong with him, you know, having been a part of the scientific community before joining Islam? Yes, sir. Okay, now, I do want to say this, just for uh, discount purposes, I'm not anti-government. I'm not a black extremist, I'm anti-corruption, right? Now, um, as the leader of the black community and as a military level general, I will not, I'm not gonna never try to throw nothing on no dirt on no man. I will say this about Riza Islam as far as what is wrong with him. The reason I even know who Riza Islam is, right, is because he slid in my son's mom's DMs and said he would kill my kids. I never knew who that man even was. That's what made me get on it. So, why the f he slid in her DMs and said that? I have no clue. I guess the Nation of Islam has a problem with up and coming black speakers in the community and they feel like they gotta be the only ones who the conscious people. So I guess they tried to bully me and suppress me. So I just wanna let you know why I have a problem with him before I answer the rest of that question. Right. He slid in my son's, so you don't think I'm just attacking a random man being a hater. Right. This how I even, this would even make me do my research on him. He slid in my son's mom's DM and basically was like him and Ben X. And was like they were brother ben yeah brother ben this is how i know who they is <laughs> this is how i got on they this is, if it wasn't for them doing that we would have never had a conversation so they slid in my son's mom's dm and basically was like you know they they me and my kids and her and i basically need to sit like like get off the scene type so i guess they was trying to like it's like you know, let's say we hustle like i'm getting money and i'm coming up and the, and the big the people who think he the bigger on the block he gonna try to approach me like man you need to get off the block because i'm did I get them? That's basically what they tried to do. Right. So I call RZA, and this is all factual. I don't give a fuck if he say it ain't happened or not. I put this. I ain't gonna lie on Buddha. I put it on Buddha. So this is this is this is how it went down. So they just said they didn't want to fight. So you know what I'm saying? I hope don't see this interview and try to get right right because they already said they didn't want no smoke. So don't plug me because you know I'll your head off. But with that being said, so I call him on the phone. And I said, yo, it was me, him, and Ben. I slid it. I put him in a group message. Now, I don't have the Instagram page anymore, or else I'd be able to show you. I, I put just, him in and a, before you go there, I'm just curious. So when he slid in your son's mom's DMs, was he like, that was his way of trying to shoot? Or was he like... He was threatening. Was he for real? He was threatening. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if he was for real, but I wouldn't slide in, I wouldn't slide right. in your DMs Period. and Point threaten you or your kids for no right. reason. I don't know you. Never had a conversation with you. You know I exist. I don't know that you exist. So you watching me, I'm not watching you. And yeah. then you come out of nowhere saying, basically, if I don't be quiet about what I'm talking about, which, mind you, I, was, I, had, I had said nothing about the Nation of Islam yet. Right. They approached me. So basically, you're trying to bully me off the scene of the conscious community, and I'm not a part of the conscious community. I've never been a part of the conscious community, so you worried about a spot that I don't even want. And I guess your, 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 your draw card was, Threaten him and his kids and see what he say. Now, little the Rizza Islam know and Ben X know, because if you just watching me on the internet, you would think I was a nerd. But little do they know, I was a man since I was 15 years old, and I probably accurately have over 50 for sure. So little did you know, you sliding in my DMs talking about you with me. 
that's that ain't about nothing to me. <laughs> that ain't about nothing to me. I grew up in maximum facilities, so I've been in maximum since I was sixteen. I didn't see more. I didn't see more than you than you than than you could than you could want to see. So I call RZA. I slide in RZA and Ben X DMs on the phone. I mean on, on Instagram, real gentleman. I ain't get rah rah. And I said, hey, let's all hop on the phone because I seen what you just said about my son to my baby mother. So slide your number. I ain't gonna do. We ain't gonna do no internet. We gonna get on the phone. So we get on the three way. And like I said, I put this on boot. I look you dead in your eyes and tell you the whole story. We get on the three way. I told Ben X and RZA. I said we on the three. I said we all on the phone. I said I ain't recording. Is you recording? Because I'm not recording this call. So once we confirmed that we wasn't recording it, I said, listen to me. Are you serious about them threats that you made? Because it's a mosque right around the corner. I will go kill everybody in that motherfucking mosque. You think I give a fuck about you talking about you from the NOI? I don't give a fuck about none of that. You fruit of the Islam, none of that. I don't know who the fuck is you think you're threatening. I don't know if this is what y'all normally do. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if y'all just normally wake up and slide the niggas DMs and say you're going to kill their kids. Not mine. I go ham for my kids. I'll go ham. So, boom. They get the pumping. I mean, excuse me. So, Riza Islam, like, no, 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 brother. I apologize. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. So, I told Riza, I said, listen, bro, I'm still on parole right now. I'm on parole right now. So I'm like, I'm on parole right now. Like you talking to me like I'm not a felon. Like who? Like you need to do your research on people before you just start threatening them. That's like me walking in the bullpen saying I will whip anybody else in the bullpen. You don't know who in this bullpen and what they in here for. Mike Tyson could be in the bullpen. You can't beat Mike Tyson. So with the average person can't. I ain't gonna lie. I think I could shake Mike Tyson. But long story short, so I'm just giving them the background and I'm like I'm on parole right now. Like you know how long I've been. Like, you gonna slide in my son, mom, DM, talking about you would do what? So I said, yo, y'all just wanna link up? Y'all wanna link up? So boom, they copped out. Now, RZA is doing most of the talking. Ben X is just sitting there. So I'm like, Ben X, I tell Ben X, I'm like, you obviously are the non-aggressive person. So you need to stop following behind just like him that just like that because you don't even have no balls to say nothing on the phone. So I know if I see you in person, you ain't gonna wanna fight. So you need to stop following behind like RZA, because RZA will get you fucked up. So now what happened was, boom, we on the jack. So now RZA like, yo, uh, he was like, listen, man, I don't want the community to see to see us fighting, this, that, and the third. We black brothers, I apologize. They apologize. And then I'm like, listen, bro, I don't play about my kids. I'm like, if you would have slid in my son, mom, DM, and said something about me, I swear to God I would have ignored it. Just talk about me every day. But when you get to talking about you going to my kids, this, that, and the third, and I'm like, I already don't with the NOI because the nigga that set me up to go upstate for his gun was from the NOI. So I already got, they already got a bad taste in my mouth from doing grind because I just did a state bid f***ing around with a nigga that's a, a NOI. So I already got a bad taste in my mouth. So now, boom, RZA was like, yo, let's get on, um, and I'm, I know this is long as hell, but I'm just catching you up so I can answer your question. So RZA like, yo, let's get on YouTube. And um, he was like, man, let's let the people know that we not beefing because everybody at this time know it's up. So I'm like, cool. So we get on YouTube and I'm like, yo, you know what I'm saying? On, on, his, on, on his behalf, he apologized. I'm like, on my behalf, I apologize. I don't want the community to think that black men are out here fighting like we don't got no sense. Uh -uh. And we squashed it. And then he tried to take that and flip it like they bitched me or something or like they made me apologize. So I'm like, bro, don't play with me, bro. Like, don't play with me like you don't know everything I said to you on the phone. And I ain't capping because he not. If he was standing right here, I'd probably have killed this motherfucker with this sword. But if he was standing right here, I would say this shit right to this nigga face. So I'm like, bro, don't get on the internet and start capping, acting like you me and you made me apologize when I'm the one that got you on the, on the three-way. I'm the one that put the pressure on you. I'm the one, I'm the reason that you even said let's get on YouTube because I was ready to meet up in person and just boil And then I'm like, cool. So now after that, this is how, this is, this is why I'm going to say it's an issue with that. So now, after that, I'm like, let me see who the f this is. You know what I'm saying? Like, who is this? Because obviously, this is setup vibes. So when I start digging into this, I figure out, oh, you're not even a real member of the NOI. You're a Scientologist. So now I'm like, who sent you? So now, here's my issue with that, right? He may, he might have changed his heart a year ago or a, or a week ago, and he may truly be genuine today. I'm not here to say that a man doesn't have the ability to evaluate his own character. My issue is be honest about how you started off. You feel what I'm saying? I started off as a hustler and as a and today I'm an attorney and a doctor and a teacher. But be honest about where you started at. If you a female, if you started off as a say that. Today you might be a lawyer, but you started as a for reason 
started off scamming this community. That is how you came into the community. So if I didn't know, even if it wasn't him personally, if it was just another bro, that's like me and you, you ask me if you got your nephew with, with you and you ask me as a man to man, yo, do you trust my nephew going in the room with this man? You want me to tell you his origins. So like I said, I don't give a, I'm not a hater. I don't care if RZA become a trillionaire next week. I don't give a but my issue is with him, don't come, um, don't come amongst the people as if you have so much care and concern for the people because in reality, you only doing that because you got caught scamming the people. You got a fucking, I got an indictment right here. You still got an open case in California right here. This is two different times. So you scam people in LA on a, in, in, out of the housing vouchers and then you got caught scamming again doing medical insurance fraud. And now all of a sudden it's the white man and it's the white man. So my issue with black people is, right, I'm not saying white people don't be doing janky. But what I'm saying is the reason we can't really see what's going on in the world because you got just yelling the white man, the white man, the white man in your face. But really they're doing the same or if not worse what they're accusing the white man of. So how is you getting on the Internet talking about this, that and the third and the white man? You scammed. <laughs> you scammed people that didn't have money. Had them thinking they was going to be able to pay cheap. You already know how high that rent is in California. You give them housing vouchers thinking that they it'll give them $1,500 off their rent. They didn't give you $1,500. They going to the joint. They talking about it's fake. So you came and did that. The white man ain't do that. You came and did the medical insurance fraud where, you, where they made, what, a million and some change. <sighs> talking about this guy. And then it's like, oh, also what people are not thinking now, if you a high school football player and you was finna go to college, because who's to say now I'm looking at your paperwork and it say you had a drug or an alcohol problem and you really didn't even have them. So my thing is, he might be a he might be a, a legitimate man now, but he wasn't a legitimate man out the gate. On top of the fact you slid in my people's DMs when I didn't even know you and threatened to kill my kids. What what kind of grown? is we supposed to be trusting with kids and, and you're threatening to kids black kids at that even if you don't like me and like I said I've been in the street everybody know his rules if you catch a black and you don't shoot him right with his kids everybody know that that's not even no secret <laughs> that's that's why I'm mad at young now because they out here just shooting and don't know who the f they shooting so it for me it would be hard for me to believe that you legitimately give a about black people and black youth when my interactions with you come from you threatening black youth that you did not know and even if you did not like me it's not gonna there's no way you're gonna tell me you didn't like my son my son just turned five so at the time he had to be one or two so there's nothing he could have did to you so you he could miss me with that he's a scammer on two different occasions so you you can't get out here and talk about the black dollar and what the white man is doing with the black dollar what you was doing with the black dollar you were scamming it and then giving it to the white man so to me He's a you a if you watching this. And I would tell you right here, if you were standing right here, you was a But even if you're not a no more, you started off as a which means you, you, would never, you would never get a certain level of, of respect in my eyes. Uh, ben X, I feel like Ben X just following, Ben X is just one of them that's just following behind the wrong. I feel like Ben X got some potential to be somebody. But Ben X got to stop. It's, it's one of them situations where you the little brother and your, your older brother is on some bush. You still follow him behind him, even though you see him on some. Bush. So my 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 um, thing on Ben X before we before we keep this pushing would just be be your own man. Be your own man, because following behind him ain't going to get you nowhere. But that's all it's going to do, because he ain't doing nothing. But he ain't doing nothing for himself, but just starting problems that he don't want. And no disrespect to Ben X, because I'm not a bully at all. But. For him to have somebody like me dislike you, just factor that in. Like, factor that in, Ben X. Like, factor that in. Like, just imagine me and you locked in the room and it's just me and you. I would, I could torture you in there if I wanted to. And you follow him behind that will put you in a situation like that because he's threatening to the kids of strangers that he don't know. So my advice to Ben X would be, if you're going to get out here and really be for the youth, even though I don't the nation of Islam for the reasons I've stated, uh... On top of the fact I did the number one doc documentary on Malcolm X in the world, it was number one, and I exposed how Elijah Muhammad was a He got a 16-year-old pregnant three times and got them other girls pregnant. Nobody want to talk about that. But outside of all of that, even if you want to rep the NOI, even though I highly disapprove, right, be your own man.
know what I'm saying? Be be your own man, like Khalid Muhammad. Khalid Muhammad was in the NOI, but he was his own man. He wasn't Malcolm. It's plenty of he didn't say that he didn't agree with that nobody liked, but he was his own man. Be your be Ben X from the NOI. Not that that's running under this because all this do is start all day. And then get on camera and try to play innocent. And that's my that's one of my biggest issues with a lot of black conscious people. I'm gonna bring this name up too. Another I got into it with down here in Houston, Umar Johnson. You feel what I'm saying? I got into it with Umar Johnson because, and mind you, the crazy thing is about Umar, I went to one of Umar lectures when I first got out of jail. One of my peoples took me, I ain't gonna say her name, but she took me in this lecture, and I'm asking him legitimate questions. He thought I was a troll or a heckler because he ain't expect me to be that smart. And he was like, man, I thought you was a heckler, man. You so smart. I'm like, no, I'm just asking you questions about your school. You throwing questions out talking about you building a school. So I'm asking you infrastructure based questions. And then he did it. Now, he didn't know that I was young Pharaoh. He didn't know that. He thought I was just a his crowd. So he did a lecture down here in Houston and um, they asked him, what you think about young Pharaoh? And he was like, he the dirtiest in the game, dirtiest young in the game. Now, my thing is, I'm like. Why did, why did he say that? What you ask him. Why would you hate on a young? Because he usually gives an explanation. Why would you hate on a young? I don't know. Hating on a young. I'm going to just be honest with you. Hating on a young, bro. Just do it all the time. Hating on the young niggas. Old football players hate on young football players. Old rappers hate on young. He hating on the young up and coming. But the thing is, he never made the distinction that you, you, you trying to diss me. You got everybody in your lecture laughing at me, but you don't even realize that I'm the same young man that just came and supported you when you came to Rochester, New York, 45 right. minutes from my city. Right. But you're trying to play me, though. But you don't even realize I just came and showed you some love. So I said to say this is the same reason I don't f with them is the same reason I don't f with Umar or none of them, because they all been trying to play me and disrespect me behind the scenes all of these years when I when I ain't one of them. I was gonna say I never said nothing about you, but I legitimately never said nothing about none of them. They've been trying to dog me and rag me, and I'm up now. <laughs> and I'm not with y'all. It just is what it is. I remember everything y'all all said about me all of these years. I would never with y'all ever, never, never, never. And I want to say this about uh, the NOI too. I was in uh, LA with K Cola before me and her fell out over the, and I ran into two from the NOI uh, and they didn't want to fight and they said it was Gucci and they shook my hand so I said to say this my beef with the NOI is squashed don't nobody try to resurrect it you feel what I'm saying but I said that to say this I just want to let the world legitimately know why we got into it because we live in a world where people start but everybody gets mad at the victim you know what I'm saying I don't know how the f that happened so I can go outside right now and just slap a random person but when he hit me back everybody get mad at him I can start disrespecting people in here but when they start disrespecting me back Y'all get mad at them. So it's like, I just want to let the world know I'm not uh, a young firecrackery man who shouldn't have any power or responsibility. I'm not somebody that just be starting or abusing my power. I just want to let y'all know they started with me. The NOI started with me. Well, I want to say I think the comments from you about the NOI are a little irresponsible because when you tell Ben X to be more like Khalid Muhammad, who named his son after uh, Farrakhan, uh, Brother Farrah Gray. Uh, it's like, you know, he was kicked out for his comment. So you basically tell him to get kicked out of an organization that he loves. I hear that. And great point. I don't want what I said to be misconstrued, right? Great point. Um, so let me be detailed. When I say that, right? And I only bring that up because you brought up Brother uh, Khalid. You are right. You the host. And you're doing a great job. This is how you know this is a good host. He listening to what I'm saying. So with that being said, my comment there is just be your own man. Be your own man. And as far as Khalid Muhammad, I'm going to show you the lecture I did. Because when Khalid Muhammad went to jail, Farrakhan wrote the judge on Khalid. Wrote the judge on him. And man, listen, I got so much. On Farrakhan, he wrote the judge on Khalid. How you write the judge on your man? How you out here? To, and even if you didn't like Khalid, right? How you write the judge on him trying to get him extra time? How you do that? That was I got the actual news article that he wrote from there from back then. So I say that about Khalid. That's another thing they don't know about Khalid. You know what I'm saying? And they also say that N O I Biggie Smalls. That's in the documentary too. His bodyguard said that the same bodyguard that was P Diddy bodyguard that said he caught him and Ja Rule in the room with sex toys. So I got all the, I got everything you need for Farrakhan. If Farrakhan could come sit right here, I'll show it to him. He wrote it. But with that being said, I just want to say that that's why I don't 
with them. Other than that, I'm not getting up head hunting for Nation of Islam. They came over here and didn't realize I was the number one researcher in the country, and I f***ed around and got all the skeletons out their closet. But it's squashed, pre-according to them, and anybody watching this video, leave it, leave it squashed. Leave it squashed. But that's why I don't f*** with them. So there was another comment you made that I wanted to hint on. Yes, sir. Um, apparently, you don't consider yourself a part of the conscious community. Yes, sir. However, a lot of us, uh, what, what's the podcast called? Uh, Sinetta. Sinetta. A lot of us know you originally from being featured on Sinetta's podcast. Yes, sir. I believe in New York, you know what I'm saying, with yes, uh, brothers from the conscious community. You know what I'm saying? And so, um, how, like, why don't you consider yourself a part of the conscious community? You know, what's your relationship with the conscious community uh, via brother Sinetta? Yeah. The couch. I got a hell of a story for you, champion. But he tried to play me on a contract, and po Brother Polite scammed me. I almost had to shoot Brother Polite ass to get my money back. What? Oh, yeah, I got a story for you. So this is what happened. This is how I, this is how the f I got involved with the conscious community. Now, once again, I want to reinstate. I'm an otanist. I'm an otanist. That's the Egyptian form of Buddhism. Most people are not aware of that as I'm on my journey to reestablish Egypt as a global empire. So I just, for, for late in turn, say I'm a Buddhist. Now, I had like 30, 40,000 subscribers on YouTube. And I did a lecture called, well, I did like a four-part series or something called the 76 trillion year history of the black race or something like that. It's actually still on my university now. Sinetta so jumped in my comments and was like, hey, man, could you come give this presentation on my platform? Now, to me at the time, I'm fresh out of prison. I don't know shit about this man like that. All I know is... It's a lot of black, seemingly educated people here. So to me, I felt like, well, perfect. It'd be the perfect opportunity for me to showcase who the f I am. You know what I'm saying? Right. So boom, he invited me to give the lecture. He invited me to get his presentation called The Bible is Based Off Astrology. Now, it was that. And then also I had a friend who I believe he's passed away now. His name is um, Authority. We go by Authority. His name was Robert Kirkland. He was a God body from Brooklyn, New York. Now, I met him in Wyoming. What's a God body? Like, like, how can I explain it? People that believe God is within themselves, like basically like Wu-Tang Clan back in the day, God body, arm, leg, leg, arm, head, peace, God, what's the science, what's the day's mathematics, you never heard all of that? No. Oh, five percenter, you ever heard of a five percenter? Yeah. Okay, that's a God body. Yeah, I know Christians also believe that God is within them and they're, you know. Yeah, it get, it get intricate. say he's a, he's right. a God. Apparently, you don't consider yourself a part of the conscious community. Yes, sir. However, a lot of us, uh, what, what's the podcast called? Uh, Sinetta. Sinetta. A lot of us know you originally from being featured on Sinetta's podcast. Yes, sir. I believe in New York, you know what I'm saying, with yes, uh, brothers from the conscious community, you know what I'm saying? And so, um, how, like, why don't you consider yourself a part of the conscious community? You know, what's your relationship with the conscious community uh, via brother Sinetta? Yeah. The couch. I got a hell of a story for you, champion. But he tried to play me on a contract and put brother Polite scammed me. I almost had to shoot brother Polite ass to get my money back. What? Oh, yeah, I got a story for you. So this is what happened. This is how I, this is how the f I got involved with the conscious community. Now, once again, I want to reinstate. I'm an otanist. I'm an otanist. That's the Egyptian form of Buddhism. Most people are not aware of that as I'm on my journey to reestablish Egypt as a global empire. So I just, for, for late in turn, say I'm a Buddhist. Now, I had like 30, 40,000 subscribers on YouTube. And I did a lecture called, well, I did like a four-part series or something called the 76 trillion year history of the black race or something like that. It's actually still on my university now. Sinetta so jumped in my comments and was like, hey man, could you come give this presentation on my platform? Now, to me, at the time, I'm fresh out of prison. I don't know shit about this man like that. All I know is it's a lot of black, seemingly educated people here. So to me, I felt like, well, perfect. It'd be the perfect opportunity for me to showcase who the f I am. You know what I'm saying? Right. So boom, he invited me to give the lecture. He invited me to get his presentation called The Bible is Based Off Astrology. Now, it was that. And then also I had a friend 
who I believe he's passed away now. His name is um, Authority. We go by Authority. His name was Robert Kirkland. He was a God body from Brooklyn, New York. Now I met him in Wyoming. What's a God body? Like, like, how can I explain it? People that believe God is within themselves, like basically like Wu Tang Clan back in the day. God body, arm, leg, leg, arm, head, peace. God, what's the science? What's the day's mathematics? You never heard all of that? No. Oh, five percenter. You ever heard of a five percenter? Yeah. Okay, that's a God body. Yeah, I know Christians also believe that God is within them, and they are, you know. Yeah, it get, it get intricate. Say he's a, he's right. a God. Yeah. So I met Robert Kirkland in Wyoming, and when I got out of jail, um, I still held him down. So I was still sending him money, writing him with him and uh that was my man's and i have to say this because it's a lot of crazy shit going on no homo when i said that that was my man i mean legitimate friend now with that being said he was up in age i think he was like 65. i wouldn't be surprised to say if that man was about 70. now me and robert got cool because they for one they sat me right next to the man and then for two he was infatuated by how well i knew the law because I don't want to disrespect Robert Kirkland, but I was better than Robert Kirkland with the damn law. And this is somebody that's been in jail for 25 years. All he do is go to the law library. So he was intrigued about my skills of how intelligent I was. So uh, Butcher McCullough, we used to rock out. Now, the God bodies got what they call the 120, which is 120 lessons. And I memorized his whole shit in 37 days. So he was just intrigued by my, my intelligence and my ability to remember so when I got out of jail, I'm like, okay, uh, while I was in there, I used to be, you know, three-way in his family for him. He used to be calling his son, calling his peoples. Just imagine being 60-something years in jail. I mean, 60-something years old in jail. You've been here 20 years. Nobody, everybody forgot about you. Right. So I'm basically putting him back in contact with the outside world. Now, when I got out, he, they hit him at the board, but I still kept making sure he was straight. Now, he had asked me to go to... The school in Mecca, which in, in translation terms would be the five percenter school in Brooklyn, in New York, and asked them why the f they don't be responding to his mail. And even when I was in there, I wrote to school and they didn't respond. So I'm like, cool. So I was already going to New York anyway for him to go to the school. So when Sinetter asked me to come out there too, I'm like, cool, I could kill two birds with one stone. I go do this interview and I go to the school. So when I go to New York, I went to the school, boop. Dubbed me. Nobody let me in. I don't know if they was there or not, but nobody let me in. They dubbed me. So I'm like, okay. And I just told Robert, like, it ain't me. I don't know what you want me to tell you. It's, dead. it's a dead end. And then, boom, I went on um, the corner. I think it was 125th, and there's a video. I think I got my hat backwards. And uh, this is where I first met Seti at. And Seti, this is how me and Seti got cool. He was the only one that defended me. Now, if you see in the video, I'm talking about astral projection and chakras. Just don't even talk about and um or didn't start talking about till now 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 not that i opened the door but i'm talking about these type of things and you see all of these dudes out there basically trying to trying to heckle me and trying to play me like i'm crazy like, like i don't know what i'm talking about and basically that was a setup so it's like he asked me to come out there to do an interview but then when i came out there you had like 15 on the corner ready to try to basically jump me so boom from there I go do the interview at Sinetter spot the next day. It was another guy I ended up having to expose later down the line named Nature Boy. Nature Boy was there. Now, Nature Boy wasn't even supposed to be in the interview. So, like, when you see the Sinetter interview and he sit next to me, that was never even supposed to be in there. Uh, so, how did he get in your interview? Sinetter told you to come up. Okay. So, y'all never had a relationship prior to that? He was cool, but he came out. The same way everybody else came out because I told my fan base I was going to New York. Right. So he rocked out. He was cool. It's a video on my on my university. I think it's called the Black Old Men is God Live Radio where I'm sitting in the car, and I mean I mean he and the driver, his his baby mom in the back and my baby mom in the back, and that's because we was all out to eat. Because what I used to do, what I used to do after my events, even I did an event down here in, in Dallas. After my events, we would all go out to eat or go to the movies or something. So, like, I just rock out with my fan base. I wouldn't just end my events. So, after I did that shit on the corner, we went to a restaurant out to eat. And I ended up getting on a radio interview, so I ran to the car. And I never even, I never even told that nigga to come in the car and record. It just came in the car, plopped the camera on, and started recording while I'm in the middle of a radio interview. But I said that to say, cool. So, I'm like, all right, whatever. You know what I'm saying? On some fan shit? Fan shit, but I, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't. 
on it like that, you know? I wasn't on it like, don't record. I didn't care. A lot of people record, but I'm like, you done left all the way out the restaurant eating with your or your baby mom, whoever to come in, in the private, in my, in my privacy moment. I'm, on, I'm sitting in your car because I don't want to be in a restaurant to come record, whatever. But long story short, so boom, when I'm at Sinetter joint, Sinetter asked me, do I know him? I'm like, no, I don't really know him like that. He just gave me a ride. He cool though, he Gucci. <clears throat> and then Sinetter was like, yo, do you want him to come up? I'm like, I'm not really with him. You know what I'm saying? I'm doing the interview. So Sinetter told him to come up. He ended up coming up, getting on the couch. And it's not, it's not clipped in there no more. But I remember when we went live, by the end of the live, because when Sinetter interviewed, when Sinetter edited his, uh, his interviews, he cut the back off. So like, let's say we was doing this and this was live. At the end, he'll let people call in and speak to the guests. But when he put the shit up, he cut that off. Why he cut that off? I don't know. That's just his style. But at the end, they was cussing Nature Boy out. They was like, yo, we young girl, but we don't this. And then we on the, uh, so boom, when I get on the interview, uh, I do the joint. But then at the end, I told Sinetta, I'm like, listen, as I told you before I came down here, your right hand man, his name is Brother Polite to scam me for five hundred dollars when I first got out of jail, so that was another reason for me to go down there. So this was this was so you had um gotten scammed from Brother Polite before prior this to even you going invited to New York, me. right? Okay. But he never knew that, so it's like so he, I never didn't know. Yeah, that. yeah, so you accidentally invited your right hand man, one of his victims. But you never knew he scammed me. Because like I said, by the, Polite scammed me when I first got out of jail. By the time I, Sinetter called me, I had like 40,000 followers. Why do you claim Brother Polite scammed you? Because I talked to that man on the phone. And this is going to sound crazy as fuck. But at the time, I was gullible enough to believe it. So he hit me with the same. This is no disrespect to the Moors. He hit me with the same. They be talking about that. Moors, science, sovereignty, secure party creditors. You on parole, I could get you off parole. The government don't have no zaga da gala. All that good talking jigaboo shit. And I gave that the $550 for a secure party creditor package or whatever the fuck it was called off his website. I got all screenshotted at home. Matter of fact, I'm going to print a book out on his. But I got all the screenshotted at home. I still got everything throughout the years on the flash drive. Two, two terabyte flash drives backed up. You would never get rid of it. But with that being said, so I sent the bread. I talked to him and his wife. I sent him the bread. And then after I sent him the bread, he just keep giving me the runaround. Like, do this, and then this will happen. I do it, don't nothing happen. Do this, then this will happen. I do it. Email me this information. Nothing get done. And then it ghosted me. So after the ghosted me, I'm like, oh, this shit, is a, this shit gotta be a scam. So then I started researching into the and I just see and I'm not making this number up, y'all, because I'm not a hater. I'm not here to never try to stop nobody bad. Y'all can look it up. As a matter of fact, if y'all go find this attorney named Attorney Ike Speaks, she's a federal attorney. And according to her, just in one year alone, polite scam for like $600,000. That's just in one year. The, the reason that he left Brooklyn is because the feds was trying to get him at one of his, one of his events for scamming, and then he ran to Cali. Then when they tried to get him in Cali, he ran to Miami. So I'm just letting y'all know this is what they do. Now, long story short, when he scammed me, he tried to ghost me. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to New York anyway. This is inviting me, and I know that this is Sinetta's right hand man. So I'm like, I ain't even going to press the issue too much. I'm going to just wait till I get there. So before I came out there, I told him polite scant me. So he like, oh, I'm going to talk to him. I'm going to get your money back. So boom, after the interview, I, t I told Sinetta, I said, yo, call polite on the three way, put it on speaker because he's not answering the phone. So put him on speaker, like, you talking to him. Let me talk to him. So when he called polite, he put it on speaker. I was like, yo, no polite, like, peace, what up, sir? I'm like, what up? This Pharaoh. So he like, who? I'm like, this Pharaoh. I'm like, yo, da 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 So I told him who I was. So he like, oh, what's up? I'm like, yo, where you been at? I'm blocked or something? Like, why I can't get in contact with you? So he like, uh, no, my bad, brother. It ain't like that. You know, I try to king you to death and brother you to death when they know they wrong. My bad, brother, king, king, brother, all that bullshit. So I'm like, yo, I told him straight up, I said, polite. I don't really know how much money you got. I'm not counting your pockets. But I know I'm broke as right now. I just got out of jail. And I ain't hustling. I ain't offering me a hundred bands to knock something off. I turned it down so I could stay cause I so I could stay legit and on my spiritual path. So I'd rather I'm too be legit to quit. Yeah, I'd, I'd rather stay humble. I'd rather be humble and work my way up slow than be scamming. But I'm like, that's my last bread. 
that's my last money. Like, nigga, I'm in college. I'm getting my little check from the Navy every month. By the time I pay my rent, nigga, that's all I got. So you didn't, so whatever money you got, whether you renting these cars or what, that's my last bread. So I'm like, it might not be nothing to you. It hurts me. So I'm like, bro, I need my money back. Or I'm like, it's out. And I don't give a fuck about signing that or being your man's or nothing. I air his ass out too. So I think I'm on net. I don't even think Sinetter paid me. I think Polite paid me back. N neither one of them paid me. I think it's Western Union me and gave me my money back. Because I kept getting on that nigga head every day. Like, bro, I would really shoot you, bro. And it ain't about the money. It's about the principle. I'm not out here. It's rules to the game. If you if you in the street, rob niggas that's in the street. You don't go rob the old mom and pop store. They not in the street. You feel what I'm saying? It's rules to the game. I'm not in the street. I'm in college at the time and working. You just scammed me for my last. Even though it was only $500, it was my last at the time. So I need that. I got rent to pay, all kind of So I end up keep putting the pressure on him. And then his, uh, I believe it was his wife, if I'm not mistaken. But if not, let's just say somebody in his circle, Western Union, me my money back. And then from there, I was beefing with the conscious community ever since then. And them niggas had a polite, had a put a fake case on me I, and all kind of He had a put a fake case on me. Man, him. he had a named Dr. Mayotte from Baltimore, bro. Deanna Bailey, that's her name. He had that say, and I got the screenshot of him admitting that they was lying and spreading rumors on me. And I successfully sued the nigga for $276,000. Brother niggas, Polite? Yeah, I got a, I beat him already in court. For all of them loot. In court? In court, Weinstein. I'm telling you, listen. So you got the paperwork. If it was in court, you got paperwork. Yeah, I got the paperwork. I got the this. I won the decision. I won. I got the decision. My question is, why the f you ain't gave me my money yet? Either you really ain't got no money like you fronting or you hiding it somewhere, but I successfully, you can go, you probably could Google it. I busted in California, in California court. But with that being said, uh, long story short, where was I at? That kind of threw my brain off. Where was that? It threw my mind off. Oh, oh my God. So this is what happened. So right. he, get, he get mad about that. So polite well, get her mad. Western Union, you, you the money. Yeah, yeah, he just get he just get mad at the same reason everybody else get mad. I'm an up and coming <clears throat> young black man, and they can't control me. You feel me? Oh. So didn't have this press charges on me and lie and say that I said I would kill her and throw her son off a bridge. Mind you, I never said that. If I said that, I would tell you I said that. I never said that. Now my thing is, I don't even got this number <laughs> so how did i when did i call her and say that i don't even got her number wouldn't have never even knew she was from or lived in baltimore if i didn't get in uh indictment uh, some indict some court papers in the mail so how am i threatening a bitch i never met her don't know okay so they have her say that i'm that i would throw her and throw her kids off a bridge bow so i'm still with yogini at the time me and Yogini driving back and forth to Baltimore from Buffalo, bro, for like a year and some change. Now, trial finally come. I'm on my way to trial down there in Baltimore. Polite and heard and called the courtroom and lied and said, I said I was going to the courtroom up when I get down there. So when I get down there, there's agents and all kind of motherfuckers in there. I'm thinking some big kingpin got arrested. They waiting on me. I walk in the courtroom, the DA like, you got to wait outside. You can't come in. My lawyer come, Spanish dude at the time, they like, he like, why you outside? I'm like, they say we got to wait outside. He go in there and come to find out they didn't call the courtroom up talking about beware of me when I come in for trial because I'm armed and dangerous. And I said, I'm in the courtroom up. Now, my thing is, if you a black woman, right, you talking about your conscious community, why would you try to set the stage for me like that before I go down here in front of these white people? Why would you try to tell them? Why would you? And then I'm like, anything could have happened. They could have pulled me over on the way there and, and assuming I got a gun or something in the car while I'm with my bitch at the time, could have tried to me or anything we get to fight or anything there's no disrespect i'm not just gonna let the police just whoop my ass. i'm not disrespectful but you're not just gonna whoop my ass because you're the police so imagine them pulling me over trying to snatch me out the car and me up because you didn't already call the courts and gave them a preconceived notion of, of 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 falsified intent so now i get down there you got these armed federal agents in there whoever they was they waiting on me boom so now when i get to the courtroom She's sitting on the left i'm sitting on the right well if i'm the judge she's on the left of the judge and i'm on the right of the judge she got all these armed police around her. Like you would have thought, you would have thought I was human trafficking her for 20 years and they found her in my basement and she's terrified. That's what you would have thought. So we get in the courtroom, this get to getting up there and y'all can go get the court minutes if y'all don't believe me. Y'all know, y'all do all the other nosy go get the court minutes. I ain't lying. They cut, guess who they cut on in the courtroom to try to vilify my character? Who? Seti. 
They cut Seti on in the courtroom. You probably don't know who General Seti is. I know who Seti is. Light skin Seti. Boom. So they cut Seti. Kind of speak a little slow. Now they cut Seti on in the courtroom. Now they didn't call Seti on one of his raids. I don't know if the police didn't shot. I think it was Corinne Gaines or something. So they didn't call Seti. So you hear him crack about 50 times. Right? Now, imagine that. Imagine that. I'm in court. You playing another man. And I ain't going to say I disapproved of what he said or approved none of that. All I'm saying is you're playing the words of another man in here to try to vilify my character based upon some that you saying I said that I never said. So it's just character assassination. Now, the crazy thing is, is in the back of my mind, the only thing that saved me is because I know in the back of my mind, I'm actually the best attorney in this. So my attorney tried to tell me, oh, I would advise you not to get on the stand. So I told my attorney, crazy as hell, I'm getting on the stand. So everybody trying to tell me not to get on the stand. I'm like, I bet you I'm getting on the stand. So I get on the stand. And the first thing I said was, and like I said, y'all can go get the court minutes because I'm not, I don't remember exactly what I said. I'm a, I'm a paraphrase, but y'all can go get the court minutes to see I'm not capping. So I'm going to just say this is in the range of what I said. I'm going to give y'all an idea of what I said. But exactly what I said word for word, uh, you know what I'm saying? I got to get it back. Now, with that being said, I said, Your Honor, the judge was on the right of me and she was sitting in front of me. I said, Your Honor, out of everything that she's accusing me of, you know, I'm being charged with electronic threats and harassment. Where is a phone call or a text message or an email of, of what she's accusing me of doing? So when I said that, the judge eyes lit up. Now, no disrespect to this judge, but I'm like, you know, what the f kind of judge is you? You sitting here got me on trial fighting there a year and some change in the state that I'm not even from for evidence that you've never seen. <laughs> so I know you ain't do what you were supposed to do in the judge's chamber with the DA. Let's just leave it at that. I know you ain't read them court minutes. You ain't look for exhibits. You, I know I know the whole infrastructure of the, of the legal proceedings. You didn't do none of that. So if I was to write the judge up for her lack of uh, ethicality, she would probably get disbarred, to be honest, because you didn't do, do nothing. Imagine having somebody on trial in front of you as a judge, and you never actually looked at any of the case that's before you. you. You basically in there just freestyling the case and didn't realize that none of the evidence was never presented until the defendant get on the stand and ask where the fuck is the evidence at? How the fuck I'm getting accused of some shit and I'm the one asking to show the prosecutor the evidence against me and you not. So mind you, the prosecutor got what's called Brady obligation where they have an obligation to present evidence that would exonerate you from the ac accusation of a crime just as much as they have an ethical obligation to, to present evidence that would. So the district attorney is actually in uh, committing a judicial infraction, specifically the infractions of ju judicial misconduct, as well as prosecutor, I mean, excuse me, prosecutorial misconduct and prosecutor maliciousness, prosecutorial misconduct because you yourself never uh, actually established prima facie or factual evidence before you attempted to prosecute me. So that was prosecutorial misconduct. Also violation of my fifth and sixth and eighth amendments, my, my, my right to due process and my right to affront my, confront my accusers. And then also is prosecutorial maliciousness because you are prosecuting somebody that you yourself knows that there's no evidence against because you never seen it. So everybody in that courtroom should have been fired. But long story short, when I said that the judge eyes lit up, and then the judge asked the DA where the evidence was. So now the DA going to ask her where the evidence is. And we in the middle of trial. So imagine being in the middle of trial. We in the middle. Once again, we're in the middle of trial. This ain't my first court proceeding. I done been down here about eight times. Imagine being in the middle of trial and then get to start asking where evidence is at. <laughs> so, so long story short, after I, say, after I said it, I said, Your Honor, I have never met this woman in my life. Ask her, and I told the judge, I said, ask her if she ever met me in my life, in her life. And the judge, eyes just got big again and looked at me, then she looked at her, and she was like, Mrs. Bailey, have you ever met the defendant? No. You ever seen the defendant a day in your life? No. I told the judge, I said, I wouldn't even know what the f this lady looked like if I wasn't in the same room with her right now. And I went to jail for a gun that wasn't mine. I did the time for it, never told on nobody. So I don't want nobody saying I'm snitching because I'm because I'm saying who gun it was. But I'm going to continue to. I didn't did a lot of shit in my life that had I would have went to jail for it at the time. I would have took it on the chin because I did it. When I caught my first gun case, I copped out because it was my gun. Maybe I could have beat it, but I wasn't that comfortable with the law in court yet. But this one right here, I took it to trial because it wasn't my gun. It was Richard Boo's gun. And he knew it was his gun because when I popped on this named Trizion Bravo and I went to the box, I seen Richard Booz in the box on golf and the nigga said, my bad, bro, I f***ed your life up. 
And then just started giggling like it was funny. And no homo, I told him that SMD stopped talking to me. So that being said, it was his gun. Also, my arresting officers who were disbarred for corruption on their task force of Queen and Hamilton because they had over 500 gun cases in a year with no 911 calls. Uh, if a Queen has any real bones in his body, a Queen will tell you, I seen him on Sherman because I had a burgundy Mustang. And the cop, you know how cops do when you got a nice car. He pulled up, who car is this? Who selling drugs? Da, da, da. And I'm like, this ain't this ain't no drug dealer car. Yeah, this is a, this is my car. I'm a YouTuber. I do lectures, wop de wop. And then when I gave him my ID, he like, oh, when did you get out? So we talking. I'm talking to my arresting officer. We kicking it though, no disrespect. And the Richard walked right up and said, yo, guess who took off running? Me. And the, and the Queen of eyes popped. And I'm like, I told you that wasn't my gun. It was his gun. So the way I went to jail was this just set me up and he took off running. And in the report, they never even wrote he was there. They just wrote that I was running and I threw a gun. But really, that's the that took off running. And if, and if you, I don't know if they still got it, but if you go get the dash cam of the car, I guarantee you see that run around, run across the car first. And so that being said, I'm going to continue for the rest of my life to say everything I've been through with the justice system since August 3rd, 2012, even though my indictments was defective because y'all said y'all arrested me August 22nd, which you couldn't have did because I was already in jail from August 3rd. So how did that crime happen? So my indictment was defective. It should have never even went through. Should have been a no bill. I'm going to continue to say it was Richard Boo's gun. But I say all of that to say, uh, some way, somehow, me going to jail for a firearm with no co-defendants, polite in the conscious community, flipped that into I was a crip, we set some on fire and I snitched on my co-defendants and they have 20 years. Now, like I said, you can go to, you can go on Google right now and Google my name. I'm not going to say my, what my mother named me on here, but I've already pulled it up. I've actually shown my case. I actually have my entire rap sheet of every charge I ever caught in my house. I never had a code except for one time when I went to jail for somebody else's weed and didn't tell on them. But with that being said, when I went to jail for my charge in 2012, I never had a code D, nor was I an active gang member, nor was I ever a crip in my life. Never have I ever set somebody on fire, and never have I ever snitched on nobody. Now, with that being said, uh, once again, just like they had Shorty put them rumors on me about saying I did this, they, they put some rumors on me talking about I c***ed a crip and set him on fire. I never was a crip. You can never find a time I was ever hanging with crips. I'm from Buffalo, New York. Uh, no disrespect, I don't know what it is now, but back then that shit wasn't that big out there anyway. So I don't, I couldn't even name no Crip sets from Buffalo, if you wanted me to be honest. So there's no way I ever was a Crip and set a Crip on fire and snitched on my Codies, but they got that rumor started. Uh, that, of course, got me in some because imagine thinking that I kicked a Crip, you know what I'm saying, and I'm not even involved, so now you got my life in danger again. Uh, then what else has the conscious community done? What haven't they done? Polite called my parole officer like 40 times. I'm not lying about the number. He called my parole officer like 40 times, lying, trying to get me locked up, saying I was threatening him. One, and this is all in my lawsuit. One of the times he called my parole officer, he said, I quote, he said that I was showing inappropriate pictures of his 10-year-old daughter on the internet. And it got so bad, my parole officer had made me get off YouTube, I think, for like two weeks until they watched every single video I ever posted. That's how much trouble got me in. But once they seen that I wasn't doing shit on there, but reading books and basically doing book reports, they was like, cool, this is lying. And my thing was, like, I ain't never, my, me and my PO was cool as shit. I ain't gonna cap, like, we ain't have no under the table shit going on. I just put my PO genuinely. She cool as shit, ain't never disrespected. Come in my house, she ain't never, because, you know, some POs be rude as shit. Right. She ain't never came in my house on no book. So I give her that respect, you know? Right. And I told my PO, I'm like, listen, I never met this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because my PO looking at me crazy because she like, you got a case in Baltimore and now they saying you doing this. And she looking at me crazy. But I'm like, I don't know these mother****. They off the Internet. You know what I'm saying? I have never met these mother****. So now you got me basically copping out to my PO to not put me back in jail because y'all keep saying I'm doing that I'm not doing. So now I told my PO, I'm like, you want to go through my phone? Like, you want to go? You can have my phone. This First of all, I'm not talking to this well, how the f and where the f would I be talking to your 10 year old daughter at? Does she have a cell phone? I don't know because I'm not in your space. You're in California. I'm in Buffalo. So if I was showing pictures of your 10 year old daughter on the Internet, the question would be, where did I get those pictures from? 
because I've never physically had contact with you or your daughter. So who did I get the pictures from? And then that question would be, is it inappropriate pictures of your 10 year old daughter circulating around? And then I'm like, why would you project pedophilia onto me? But then guess what ended up coming out? He's a pedophile. And it ended up coming out that, and, and y'all know I just well, did it. it's alleged, it's alleged. Oh no, it's a fact, it's a fact. It ain't alleged, I'm saying it's So a he's fact. been to jail? Like oh, he just got trial. arrested for some new recently. I remember him getting arrested, but I, I don't think there was ever a trial. Listen, everybody, I'm on Twitch. I wanted to say that, not to cut you off. I'm on Twitch, by the way. I'm not on YouTube anymore. Y'all can go on my Twitch, Young Pharaoh Inc. That's me on Twitch. I do my thing. If y'all know me already, y'all been looking for me. I'm on Twitch. I just got my Twitter back. Thanks to Elon Musk, Pharaoh underscore Otten. Click the link in the bio. My YouTube is King. I, I mean, my, my Instagram is King Otten, A-T-E-N. King spelled regular, K-I-N-G, A-T-E-N, the number nine. Click the link in that bio, y'all. Go to my Twitch. Follow me on Twitch. I'm on there how I was on YouTube. I said to say, I just did another video on Polite recently, just re revamping and revisiting. Polite right-hand man, Sinetter, did a video. I played it. I still got the clip right now. His right-hand man, him and, him and Polite got into it. Why, I don't know. But I know Polite was like, listen here, little Dr. York. And he called him Baby York. And he was like, listen here, Baby York. Don't make me expose how... You was talking to your, I don't know what's her name, but it was his ex, one of his ex. He was like, don't make me expose how you was talking to your ex. And you had her underage fall so in love with you that she ran away from home with her mother to be with you. So that's, that's coming out his right hand man mouth. And then I did the research on it. And one of, his, one of the pictures on his Instagram where he was posting his daughter, talking about it's her 21 year old birthday. That wasn't really his daughter. That was the underage girl that ran away with him when she was like 16 or 13. And he had been raising her as his daughter, but secretly they didn't have a relationship the whole time. And then it also came out when he went on, uh, I think the name Jesse Peterson or Patterson. I did an interview with him and Polite had did an interview with him before then. And Jesse asked me, I mean, Jesse asked Polite, how old was his one wife when he met him? Is the interview still on YouTube? Y'all can go watch it. He asked Polite, how old was his daughter when he met her? He said he met her at 17. <laughs> Seven, and I'm like, the only way I'm going to jack you meeting your wife at 17 is if you like 18, 19, 20, maybe 21. And that depends on like high school because like you might be a sophomore. You talking about his second wife, huh? The one that worked at the library. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that interview. Yo, so I'm like, and then I'm like, you just went to jail. You just went to jail. Believe, oh, you, you, you. They lost me at first. I'm telling you now. Then, then he does, so this you is, know what I'm saying? So, then, so I'm like, so you got, a under, you got a minor growing up in your house that you fake showboating as your daughter. You got another one of your wives that you met when she was a minor. Then you just caught another charge where they talking about you left DNA on a minor. And she was drunk, passed out, and woke up with your son on her. So it ain't never been the trial. You right. But that don't mean he ain't do it. <laughs> but, 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 but I'm a... You know, and I'm not gonna defend. I'm not gonna defend this, but I will say because I was arrested at 17 and I was charged as an adult in, in Texas at 17 years. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? So I just I, I got to in, in defense to the black man. You know what I'm saying? I just got to. You know, I was arrested at 16, charged as an adult. But what I'm saying is he was an adult, charged as an adult, and his ass was an adult when that minor ran away with him. And if nothing else, my thing to him would be this: psychology, because I got two daughters. I would never intentionally falsely accuse a man of molesting my daughters whether especially even if I know he didn't do it because I wouldn't want that energy on my baby imagine me looking at my daughters y'all if you got daughters at home imagine looking at your daughters and saying this man molested you when he was when you was a kid or this man was showing inappropriate pictures of you when you was a kid and you know it's not true so now my question would be you know what I'm saying? This is no disrespect to his daughter, Mayat. You know what I'm saying? Because she's going to grow up one day. She's going to be a grown woman and see this. But my question to him would be, where, what kind of man are you where you will falsely put that energy on your daughter? Because what if your daughter get grown and I run into your daughter and she try to press me about I was showing p inappropriate pictures of her and now I got to explain to her, ma'am, do you realize I never met you or your father a day in my life? Do you realize that this was literally trying to get my parole officer to violate me on parole because they was mad I was coming up getting money? So now I have to ask, what kind of would even fake say that? That's even worse than the saying you whooped their ass. I'd rather say I whooped their ass and I didn't than the say I whooped them and I didn't, let alone a man that would lie and say I'm showing inappropriate pictures of his daughter. And like I said, I ain't never changed my number. My number's still the same. I guarantee you the CIA done went through all my history and everything. 
Ain't no inappropriate pictures in there. My parole officer then went through everything, w had went through everything at the time. So he definitely lied, and I sued him. I won a lawsuit. The black woman is God. No, in the sense of which I've always said no. Now, everybody in the community really come get that teaching, and they get it from Dr. Ben. So I just want to say that for those of you who don't know where that teaching comes from, it comes from Dr. Ben. So you probably most likely heard it from SETI first because he studied under Dr. Ben. And then you heard it from either me or Polite. But it comes from Dr. Ben. And I got it through uh, genetic research as well as following Dr. Ben and SETI uh, on the teaching. But I want to let everybody know where my understanding comes from and what I mean when I say that. Because everybody has a different perspective. Said he got his own perspective. I don't know what the light got going on. But I'm giving y'all my perspective, right? Reverse. I am a polymath, for those of you who don't know. A polymath is even greater than a, gen a regular genius. A genius is someone who mastered one subject. A polymath is someone who's mastered multiple subjects. Hence poly meaning many in math. So I actually am a master level geneticist. Um, now, with that being said, when you look at the chromosome structures, right, and this comes into extraterrestrials and everything, because if y'all don't know, I've been abducted like five to seven times, and um, I'm very well versed on extraterrestrials, very well versed. Now, actually, I believe I'm the most versed in the world, but with that being said, uh, when you look at the human genome structure, specifically of black people, we have an XX chromosome and an XY chromosome. The XX chromosome is feminine and the XY chromosome is male. We know that the XY chromosome is the XX chromosome minus 2.8% of its own genetic mass. Hence why every woman is impregnated with a male or with a female until two to six weeks into the birth when that Y chromosome is transferred back to the, to the, to the fetus through the placenta from the mother and then the child goes to become a, a, a boy. But if that process never takes place, we all would be girls. And this is also why you're born with extra foreskin on your penis because the foreskin on your penis is the skin that's supposed to be on your vaginal wall had you stayed on the road to becoming a girl. So this is also why men uh, neurologically, uh, I don't even want to say grow. We neurologically develop a tad bit slower than girls. This so is why girls tend to be faster. Not to interrupt you, but the because you, you brought up foreskin, right? And yes, sir. I thought that was to protect. You know what I'm saying? So I know the this is the, the inside out, though. You know right. what I'm saying? Or however it is. But I didn't. Yeah, I'm not know, saying it may not that. be protective to the. I'm not even discarding that. Right. I just know that it is the skin on a vaginal wall as well. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. So like no homo, no homo. But like, no, you no know, homo, your penis no homo, is like your vaginal wall coming out, but with a shaft in there. And your balls is actually <laughs> your ovaries coming out. So a penis and a vagin, your penis and your oh, and your and your testicles is actually your vaginal is actually a vaginal tube or a vaginal canal and the ovaries coming out of the body. This is why it's male and female, man and womb man. A woman is just a, a man with a womb, no homo. So, uh, you know, this is why they call her our counterpart. You know, even in the Bible, when they say Adam and Eve, Adam is Adam's, and Eve is the mitochondrial Eve gene. That's why they say Eve came from Adam's rib, because Eve is really just, d um, uh, d DNA looks like a twisted ladder. It looks like a rib cage. So that's the science why they say woman came from man, but really man came from woman. So when I say the black woman is God, I'm talking about genetical, uh, foundated proof that they were here first, uh, at least in this form, from what we know ourselves to be homo sapiens. And then um, I'm talking about e uh, from cometology, because it's not Egyptology, it's cometology, where we're talking about noon, which is the uh, primordial waters, which is the universe, which is ever expanding. That is prim primarily uh, an electronic force. And when we say electronic, we're talking about electrons, because electrons, which are on the outside of atoms, are the particular uh, molecules which actually create elements. So to give you an example, if this is chemistry, the first element would be Helium, I believe, if not hydrogen. Hydrogen, right? Yeah. Thank you very much. Hydrogen. And then let's say hydrogen gives off a, a hydrogen has one electron. And then when hydrogen gets another electron from another atom's ring, it upgrades to another element and becomes helium. So the masculine force, just like in our solar system, the sun is in the middle and the planets are like electrons. Same thing on the atom. That's why they say as above, so below. You got the, the protons and the neutrons in the middle, which is the power. Then you got the electrons on the outside, 
like your mama in the kitchen on Thanksgiving with all your aunties. They cooking and making. So that's how the universe is constantly expanding and things are being born. Planets are born out of stardust. There's no such thing as stardust. It's actually just called astrobiologics. So astrobiology is actually just the origins of where all of our DNA and everything come from and why we made up of carbon and stardust, stardust and how we form on these planets. So when I say the black woman is God, and she's the physical reputation of the creator. The creator is the universe, and she's the physical manifest creator of the universe. But I don't mean that in the sense of your baby mother should be dogging you and cussing you out. Because I know for a fact a lot of women take some of my teachings and they abuse them. Just like men take some of my teachings and they abuse them. And that is my biggest fear and what my biggest fear has always been. That somebody would say, well, young Pharaoh said this, so let me go around the house and be a, a terrorist. You know what I'm saying? So I'm only speaking towards that as generator, organizer, dispenser. Black women generate, organize, and dispense the genetics in order for us to carry on these physical vessels. Um, I've also used the analogy of renting a car. You know what I'm saying? In order for you to reincarnate, for you to, re for you to become carnal once again, right. you have to come through the vessel of a female. So it'd be like going to rent a car. You gotta, you get that car, you do what you do, and you take it back. You get this body, you do what you do, then you go back to the, you go back to the ethers, and your body goes back to the, oil, the to the to the earth. At least it should. I don't know what. There ain't no telling what they doing with your body today. But it should be going back in the ground. But long story short, that is what I mean when I say the black woman is God. Just giving her her, her genetic, and cosmic and spiritual respects, even if she today has abandoned or forgot them. But as far as like just trying to be bullies or get you fired from your job or your relationships up or not let you see your kids or put you on child support. Right. I ain't, that's not what I'm doing. Yeah, that ain't what I'm talking about. You feel me? And I, it's a lot of women that be with a black woman is God. Like, no, that ain't what I'm talking about. And um, beautiful question. Glad, glad, I, glad we got to that. Right. And um, that's all. Oh, I got one more thing. I got a couple more things that conscious community did. So basically, they try to get on me for saying I'm not pro-black, but I'm not pro-black. I'm pro-righteous. And the reason I say that is because black people do bullshit just like everybody else. We might not be doing it on the scale of everybody else, but as I just told y'all, everything I've been through. So imagine getting dogged out and getting uh, false accusations and having your jeopardy, having your freedom jeopardized constantly by that's claiming to be conscious, but then they're yelling that they pro-black. So I said I'm pro-righteous because I've always had a diverse crowd. I remember I did a lecture in Philly one time. I had Chinese people and white people come out. I did a lecture in Chicago. I had white people come. Imagine that. I'm doing a lecture in the south side of Chicago. I got white boys up in there. So mm. I always have a diverse crowd. I've never just had only black people in my sh So I always say I'm pro-righteous. I'm pro what is righteous. I'm not just pro-black because black people do. But you know how much but I got the f out of the streets because I seen doing So you know what I'm saying? I don't deal with a lot of my family because they, they full of I actually don't deal with none of them. So imagine that. They try to, they try to you know, I'm not black enough. I'm a white boy. Why, why, why? And then um, what really got me was we had a debate coming up. If I'm not mistaken, I was supposed to debate polite and Dr. Mayat and them. And, and the charges and all of this happened after. So I'm actually going backwards in the story now because I know you probably would think, well, why would you do a debate with them when they press charges on you? I did this. was after. So now I'm, I'm actually going in rever reverse chronology. So it was a debate we were supposed to do in New York and this told me, okay, I'm going to keep it a buck. I normally don't talk numbers, but I'm going to talk numbers with y'all. I'm going to give y'all the behind the scenes numbers. This, this Sinetter had made like a hundred thousand off my name. Made like a hundred thousand dollars. I brought my whole fan base to this. Mind you, I told you I already had my own fan base. I was never, like, I know a lot of people say, well, we met you on Sinetter. You might have seen, that's like somebody seeing me on this platform and then saying, you're from this platform. And I would never disrespect you. This is your platform. I'm very appreciative of you allowing me to come on. But just as much as I want to be able to say this man is doing his own thing and allowing me to come on, I have to be able to say I was doing my own thing. So it's, it's just being fair. Here. It ain't yeah. even no disrespect. So it's like, I know a lot of people think I came from Sinetter, but no, he called me on. Now, I already had a massive, a massive platform. I didn't brought, brought my whole platform to this. So he done made $100,000 off my fan base. You, he ain't no debater. <laughs> you just, no disrespect. You just, you just the Don King of this shit. I'm Mike Tyson. So I didn't bought, I, he didn't made like a hundred something thousand. Now, I'm going to tell you the deal I gave him, and I might have been lowballing at the time because my business mind wasn't as savvy as it is now, but I'm going to give you all the truth on the numbers. I told, I told Sinetter, I said, listen, 
give me, I think I said, give me $600 to $1,000 every month for six months. And then after that, my, uh, my presence on your, on your footage is good. Cause like what he was going to do is he was going to record the debate and then resell the DVDs. So I'm like, well, nigga, that's my, like, I'm trademarked. You know what I'm saying? I'm doing legitimate business. Now I'm not going to try to tap your pockets and we can keep this shit going if you wanted to do it. You know what I'm saying? Now I got my own debate league. But with that being said, I'm like, give me four bands just for the event. You can cake. I'm going to let you cake. Just give me four bands. You done already made a hundred thousand. I seen it with my own two eyes. I really should be asking you for at least 20 bands. I'm the headliner. Everybody here to see me. This is my fan base. I told them to give me four bands to get up there and do my thing and give me like $600 or $1,000 just once a month for six months. And then after that, whatever the f you make off my name is you. But I just want to be paid for my name. Then told me, okay, we agreed to that. I promoted this an event even more for like at least my a year at least six months minimum so it ain't no telling how much more he done made past the hundred bands i'm talking about motherfuckers then flew to new york nigga hotels was packed we finna get it in we finna get it in the day comes where we supposed to do the debate i'm gonna look the camera dead in the face i put it on buddha i'm not gonna never lie on buddha then told me i'm not paying you get on the stage anyway I said, excuse me? <laughs> like, excuse me? He said, quote, I'm Sonetter. You should just be happy that I'm putting you in front of the world. I said, do you know how much money I make without you? This the most money you done made in your life, and it's because of my name. Then this ain't no disrespect to Seti. You can ask Seti, because no disrespect to Seti. You can bring Seti in here right now. Seti brand was dead. <laughs> I brought Seti to you, fan base. Ask Seti how much any ask Seti how much money he made doing lectures with me as opposed to without me. Okay, so I bring I come in with the bag anywhere I go. You know when my fan base come in, we come in with the bag. So I'm like, how disrespectful is it that you had me promote this for a year, at minimum a half a year? You done made near at least 150 thousand. All I'm asking for is 10 bands, four now and another six later down the line. That's not you could have just gave me the 10 bands and got me the fuck out your way to be honest. But how disrespectful is that, that I promote this shit all of this time and then he breached the agreement and then tell me that I should just be happy to get on the stage anyway because he's Sinetter. What? I wouldn't have gave a f if it was the Grammys. Don't breach the contract. So then he come up with another contract, right? Because he's trying, he trying to put me under pressure like, whoa, well, everybody going to wonder why you're not trying to come get on the stage. Uh, uh. I'm like, well, guess what we going to do? We're going to go up there and explain it to him. <laughs> That's what the f we gonna do. So, boom, they go rewrite a contract. But as I'm reading the contract, and like I like I said, he don't know that. A lot of people don't know that I'm very I'm a very well versed attorney. You know what I'm saying? So he thinking he about to get me. I'm a young nigga. I'm 29 now. At the time, I think I was like 22, 21. You know what I'm saying? He trying to get me. Mm -hmm. So he thinking he gonna get me. And I'm reading the contract, and in the contract, I seem to say. Sonetta Studios will then take ownership of Young Pharaoh and all things in his name and likeliness. <laughs> so you basically try to hit me with a soul sale contract. Like, I might as well went to Hollywood and signed something. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You basically try to get me to sell my soul. Hell no. What you mean you gonna own my name and my brand and my likeliness for all of eternity? Throughout the universe. So when I see that weird word and I'm like, nigga, I already know what you're trying to do. You're trying to own. You see, you see that I'm about to be a rising star and you're trying to lock me in right now. It's giving me majestic vibes off 50 Cent, Get Rich or Die Trying. But long story short, so I'm like, you don't get the f out of here playing with me, bro. So that, that event didn't fall through. And then all of the, after that didn't fall through, he got mad because he didn't make that money. And then boom, that's when they had Dr. Mayotte press them fake charges on me. They had polite call him IPO. They had polite lie and say that I was showing pictures of his underage daughter, anything else you could think of was threatening me. Anything you could think of, bro. Like, I don't want you to think I'm lying, but anything, they still trolling me. If you get on YouTube right now, they still trying to dog me in the country. They have never, they've been basically cyber bullying me for like five, six years. So now I'm at the point now where I'm just like, I ain't even never had a white man come bother me. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's you. 
So as we go to the next subject, I just wanted to let everybody know, especially this gentleman know, and the viewers who may be new to me. If you've been following me for years, y'all already know. But if you're new to me, I just want y'all to know this is why I don't f with the conscious community. I don't f not name one n out of the conscious community. I was f with Seti. Uh, me and Seti got cool from when I came out there. They tried to jump me. And me and Seti was Gucci, at least to my knowledge, all the way up until his birthday. I think two years ago, I sent him 10 bands on his birthday. Never heard from him again. To be honest, I really don't want to know why. I don't care. I, I moved on. But other than that, I would say I f with Seti, but I don't f with him. I don't f with him no more either. But I don't wish nothing bad on him. I wouldn't let nothing bad happen to him. I wouldn't never let no white mans or nothing get him. But I just want to let y'all know that that's why I don't f with him either. Because I sent him 10 bands on his birthday and he ghosted me and never gave me an explanation for why. And I don't even want the explanation. But I just want to let y'all know this is why I don't f with the college community. Because anytime my name come up, they act like they don't see me out here getting shot off from the CIA. Like they don't see me out here doing real good work. Because just always got some, some bullshit. To say on my name that's not true, whether it be Umar or whether it be the n that y'all named, I mean, that we spoke on, whether it be just be anybody. And I just never understood why older black people would hate on a young, up and coming black person that's doing positive because I could still be out here shooting for money. I could be out here still, uh, I don't really think selling weed is that bad, but you know what I'm saying? I could be out here still trapping for money. I could be out here still in the streets. I, I'm not in the streets, and y'all don't have nothing nice to say. They've never had nothing nice to say about me, and I've never in my life had somebody try to get me falsely arrested more than this particular community in my life. Still to this day, y'all be trying to get me falsely arrested, arrested, and I hope that that has successfully and properly answered your question to why I'm not a part of the God's community, man. They just keep, they keep, it's like they trolling me. I watched part of your uh, Tasha K interview right before you came. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying, and it seemed like a really, you know, I don't, I don't, I wasn't there, and I don't know her interview style. I haven't seen too many of her interviews, just like her back and forth between her and Charles White. But however it is, um, it just seemed a little hostile. Yes, some sir. of the questioning, um, some of the responses, like it just seemed a little like, you know, I don't know. Right. And I know how you said you used to believe the black woman is God. Now you like, you know what I'm saying? You didn't kind of switch your philosophy. Well, no, 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 well, no, no. I don't want you to get it twisted. I said, as I've always stated, genetically, esoterically, yes. But being on your bully and doing grimy, no. I just want that to be no. Well, my thing is, is this, it's like you, you talked a little earlier off camera about... Um, women like just arguing you know yes, what I'm sir. saying like and being difficult to be ain't, I don't know what the f y'all got going on excuse my language but y'all is not y'all are not helpful at all y'all is ruining it's almost like y'all coming to the life just to f it up or make it difficult I want to say that but I ain't mean to cut this gentleman off go ahead well I, I guess that's kind of what I was getting to is a lot of black men and black women typically have hostile relationships yes, in general. You know what I'm saying? And so my question for you is, why do you think that is? Beautiful question. And I'm going to answer that. And I want to touch on the Tasha K thing. Tasha K owed me some money from that interview, actually. So I want to tell you what happened with that interview. So you can get all the juice right now on your platform. I'm giving them, giving them, I ain't never gave this interview nowhere. I'm giving it right here on, on, on the Great One platform. Tasha K agreed to put that, this was the deal. Once again, breach it, people breaching their agreement. The deal was, hey, I'm going to do the interview with you. As you can see, as y'all can see who all watched the interview, she spent two hours asking me about, here. he say, she say, baby mama, bud. She ain't asking me about none of this. <laughs> you ain't asking me about none of my accomplishments and goals or nothing. You just asked me about, he say, you ain't asked me about my Otten Tech company, which is worth a trillion dollars monthly. That's no cap. You ain't asked me about my university, my social media app, my music app, my filming app. She ain't asked me about my foreign invention. She ain't asked me nothing about my actual work. She just sat there and asked me about that was rumors. So anyway, she wasn't supposed to do that, y'all. But I told her, I said, I will come on your platform and do the interview with you. But the deal is, you have to put my YouTube channel in there and promote my YouTube channel so that way I can get my followers up. In the description. Yeah. Right. And edit me however the f*** she edited. You know what I'm saying? Just edit me in there. She never did that, though. What she did was she never put the interview on YouTube. She put it on a personal website that I never knew she had and then charged people to see it and made money off my name. So I told her, and I still got the text messages. I put the 
It's all on damn YouTube. I told her, I said, listen, sweetheart, if you're going to try to backdoor me and make some money off my name, which is, this is my business name, I want 75% of whatever the f you make off my name, period, because you're not about to backdoor me like that. So she dubbed me in the text messages. She said something like, if you don't want to talk on the phone, I don't want to talk. Dub me. I'm like, okay. Boom. So whatever the amount of bread that Tasha K made off my name, I still to this day want my money. And I, we already know Cardi B didn't sued her. There's no disrespect to Cardi B. I'm not Cardi B. I want my money. But now, so that, as you can see, she heckled me the whole interview. She didn't listen to what I said the whole interview. She tried to actually attempt to make me seem crazy. She asked me, do I believe I'm hallucinating because I read too many books? How disrespectful is that? So she just violated me the whole interview. Um, but I kept it respectful. I stayed cool. And that's what happened with her. Now, to answer the other half of your question, do you remember what it just was? Oh, women. Why do I believe black women and black men are so hostile? I'm gonna say, why do I know? I know black women are hostile towards men because you're growing up in the, you're lit, no, I don't even, I'm not even gonna say white people no more because that's just a, a, a color of law. That's just a, you know what I mean? All I'm gonna say is, because it ain't even all of them. All I'm gonna say is black women have to stop listening to Western philosophy. Y'all got to stop listening to Westerners, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I ain't saying people of the East got it all right, but they sure got it better than in the West. So black women got to stop listening to feminists. See, the thing about the feminist movement, right? Right. How it really the black community up is because, and I got a doc, I got a, uh, a lecture that I was putting together on the feminists. I ain't put it out yet, but I put it together. Um, it was about a feminist who was there during the roots of the movement, and she broke down how she regretted it because... Uh, she actually said that it played a role in the, in the suicide rate of men. And, and we can see that that's right today because the suicide rate of men is 80%. And I ain't making you feel yourself. You ain't making me feel myself. Do you know what's making me feel yourself? They go to college for all of them years and become a doctor and you just come f*** their life up and put them on child support and do f So now you don't want to live no more because you didn't f*** their whole life up. That's what's making so they have kids in the family, and then you run off with a n kids with another, n and then rob him. Cause, cause I'm gonna tell you exactly. I'm gonna say the same I said on, on, on in court to the judge, uh, to my baby mothers is is kidnap, robbery, and extortion. If I take a child from you and tell you you can't see the kid unless you're giving me some money or this, that, and the third, at minimum, that's extortion, if not robbery. So just because y'all bitches is doing it through the courts, don't make it no less of a crime. It's still kidnap, robbery, and extortion. You just doing it through the courts. So that is still a crime. Period. So that's what's making us commit suicide. Feminists don't give a fuck about y'all out here just beating niggas with the whip every day. Now, y'all listen, women is listening to these Westerners and y'all allowing them to convince y'all to be our enemy. But then another, uh, the other aspect of that is if y'all not listening to these Westerners, y'all just simply don't know how to be women. And I'm not saying if you a basketball player or you a boxer, can't be a female because there's plenty of kids that fight but still put on a dress and know how to be nice. A lot of y'all been watching too much Tyler Perry. I'm going to just be honest. Y'all got that Medea mentality. And what y'all don't realize is, men, we don't want that unless you a But I'm not Nobody in here is So they don't want no barking on them and cursing at them. We men, we don't even bark on each other and curse at each other. Little do y'all know. And who do bark on their and cuss on their that must not really be their real friends because your real friend ain't going to be talking to you crazy all day. So... Y'all just don't know how to be women. On top of the fact y'all have a feminist mentality, whether y'all know it or not. And then, not only don't y'all know how to be women, y'all want us to give y'all everything for nothing. Y'all even got a problem with 50-50. I'm seeing a video. I seen a video of a today. She said, excuse my language if I say, I grew up in a ghetto. Sometimes I say, y'all say too, so don't judge me for that. I seen a today on a video. She said, I'm not doing, she said, I got a son and a, a man, a, she said, a she said, I need to know that me and my son come as a package deal. And the dude asked her, well, what about 50-50, especially you bringing a son into the equation? And she was like, I, I'm, I'm the prize. Like, like he need to, he get me. He, they, they asked her, what do you get? What does he get? She said, he get me. Now, let's just, let's just go to, 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 to rational logic here. If I move in with one of these on this, in, this, in here, right? Let's say I'm up in life and I got to move in with one of them and I'm fortunate enough to move in with one of them as a roommate. If I can't buy, if I can't go 50-50 with rent, at minimum, I'm putting groceries in the fridge. I'm doing something to show my friend that I'm pulling my weight. I ain't my friend. Y'all, these is y'all lover. These is y'all spouses. And y'all not willing to do shit 
the show that y'all pulling y'all weight. So y'all don't want to, y'all 50 50. You don't even want to buy groceries. You don't want to buy cleaning supplies. Most of y'all can't cook. That's why y'all, if you wanted me to tell you the truth, this is why you want to take you out because you can't cook. So it's not like you're an asset around the house. So a lot of women are just liabilities and their headaches, and then they got mouths on them and attitudes at the same time. And then it's, it's, it's like, how do you think a man is going to get along with that? You never know if a got to go to work and he works some shifts where he can't, he don't f with his manager and then he got to come home and be acting like the same type of b boss or manager. So it's basically like this is not dating women anymore. We're dating parole officers and managers. That's all y'all want to do is police a life, tell a what he can and cannot do. And I feel like black women, and it, it, we could say it come from slavery, Willie Lynch, or whatever. The f I advise all of y'all to go read the Willie Lynch manual, but whether it, whether it do or it don't, what I will say is I feel like black women have this, this psychology in America where they're too used to babying. Like, no disrespect to Rod Wave. This is why a lot of y'all love Rod Wave. Y'all love Rod Wave because he, he whining about all the time. You know what I'm saying? And this is no disrespect to Rod Wave. I for Rod Wave. But y'all would never show DMX the same amount of love y'all show Rod Wave. Why? Because DMX ain't whining. DMX will bark on your So it's like women don't love. Y'all don't. Y'all just got to be honest. Y'all don't love actual masculine men anymore. Y'all love that y'all could be mothers to. And then y'all get into relationships with men. And you try to be his fucking mother. And the shit don't work because a nigga don't want to date his mother. A nigga want to date his but you want to be in the house barking orders all day, barking commands all day, telling who and who they cannot, where they, who they, you know what I mean? It's just like you, it's just like y'all might as well just go become some aggressive, grimy parole officers if y'all going to keep this up. So I feel like to pass it back to the host, it's a myriad of reasons why we don't get along. I can't just let you slide with the child support comment and not say there is a host of black men. Yes, sir. Who do not take care of their kids. Oh, that's so true. So when it comes to needing financial compensation, bro, it costs a lot of money to raise a child. Oh, that's true. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not justifying the child support system as I know it's corrupt. Yes, sir. And sucks. But it's like, man, some of these sorry. That's right. He's 100% correct. And I want you to know I try to stay on topic. I spoke to women, speaking to the women on this one, but... As anybody who know who's been following me and following me through the years, y'all know I was getting on first before I was getting on women. I didn't start getting backlash from black women until I started getting on black women. But y'all wasn't saying shit when I was talking about just who don't take care of their kids. And that was another issue I had with black women because it was all kiki and cackles when I was saying shit about black men. But as soon as I started defending black men, it was an issue. But I totally agree. And that is why I'm proposing this as I build my nation. Um, DNA tests will be mandatory. Fuck all that finding out this ain't your kid down the line. We need to know that shit at birth because why is it not already mandatory? So in our nation, DNA test is going to be mandatory. Child support is going to be mandatory. Uh, if, 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 if need be, if both parents need, if both parents can't, can't agree to financially support your child, child support will be mandatory. I believe child support should be split. Um, whoever the breadwinner is should take, the, should take the brunt. For example, if I'm doing 50000 a year, and the woman I had um, the child with is doing 20000 a year, then the percentages should be mostly weighed to me, but it should be even to where nobody's really feeling too much pain financially. And also, uh, a percentage of that child support uh, should be and will be going into a, a bank account generated for the child. And also, a card should be created to where, specified to the age of each individual child, they should only be able to buy products for that child. Because let's just be honest, a lot of men and women are weaponizing child support. And y'all buying everything but shit for these kids with the child support. Getting child support money and then going to the club to get that outfit and get their hair done. And the child running around with damn sauce on his face or her face from two days ago. And you got your hair and your nails done. Or this got some new J's on, but baby girl hair ain't done. So I believe, and what I'm going to do as I build this nation is we're going to lock, DNA going to be mandatory. Uh, child support is going to be highly regulated and it's not going to be administered if not needed. If she working and you working, y'all are going to figure that shit out. And if not, it's going to be, uh, I don't even want to use the word garnished. It's going to be waged where it's even. 
Because I don't understand why you just need $200,000 a month in child support. I don't understand that. I don't understand right. why you Kanye need paying 200000 to Kim, I believe. Ain't yeah, it? that's crazy as f Is it child support or is it your lifestyle support? Because my thing is, when a man gets with a woman or a woman gets with a man, you already got yourself in life to where the f*** you got you. And I got me. So if I turn myself to a millionaire and I pick a b up, especially it's different for a man because we don't date for protect for provision and protection. We date for what we date. Women date for provision and protection. We date for beauty and femininity and motherhood. You know what I'm saying? So, and nurturement. So a n would take a bat, a billionaire, let me speak to myself, self-made millionaire, about to be a trillionaire. I would date a bad bitch from McDonald's and, get, and have her quit the job and have her come right on the team if I seen the qualities in her that I wanted to see in a woman. Because unlike a, 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 a woman, a man is not, unless you're a bum who just dating because it's February and it's tax season. Other than that, the average man is not, the average man is not looking at a woman saying, what kind of money can I get out of her? We're not looking at you like that. At least I'm not. Now, and I don't believe nobody in this room is, but women, despite if we look good or not, they do look at our lifestyles. And some people might say you a gold digger, to a certain extent, some is gold diggers, but for the most part, that's just natural. You even see that shit in nature. You're not gonna see the weakest lion with the with the lionesses. You're gonna see the nigga that's already established with the lionesses, because they know we can sleep here, it's safe, and it's established. So I pretty much believe that that's in human nature. If we was living in ancient times, this is no disrespect to the. If we was Indians, the don't, she want the nigga in the longhouse. She don't want the nigga in the hut. If if she could get him, you know what I'm saying? She want the nigga in the longhouse. You don't want the in the hut. You want to be in the longhouse with the chief. You don't want to be in the hut with the soldier. But you might be in the hut with the soldier, which is cool. But in the back of your mind, some of y'all, especially if you single, you, you trying to get up in there with the chief. So it is what it is. But I say that to say this need to be regulated because people are just weaponizing it. You do have people that just, I'm mad, so I'm going to your bag up and put you on child support. And I don't think that, I don't think women understand how critical that it is. And the reason that that's critical is because not only are you destabilizing the man's life, you know what I'm saying? How many niggas is in and out of jail just because they license suspended? Because of child support. You got niggas that's in and out of jail like they career criminals off a suspended license because of child support. That's crazy as What the f me driving got to do with me paying my child support? And, I, and if I can't drive and go to work or at least go rob a if I can't drive to go do something to make some money, how the f I'm going to pay the money that you taking me to jail for for not paying? So... That's critical. Then for two, y'all are not thinking about the uh, economic infrastructure of the country. And I said this about the police. The reason America is so f***ed up and broke is because nobody can actually financially be stable because y'all taking to jail every other day for nothing. Now, you might say that's not important, but I'm going to tell you why that's important. When you go to jail, I don't give a f*** if you in jail for 72 hours. Your ass, your life is done. Once you get a no-show on that job, because you about to get a no-show. So once you get the no-show, you fire. Now you can't pay that car note or that rent or whatever. The f now you done. So you can go to the club and go to jail for three days, and your whole life is over after that. Trust me, I done been in jail enough times to know. So at the rate that America locks up, how the f*** do you do, do think the American economy is going to build if you constantly causing people to lose their jobs and lose their homes and lose their that's the true reason it's so f***ed up over here and people homeless. Now, then you factor child support in that. So between the police taking niggas to jail and niggas and putting each other on child support and going to jail because they can't afford this, the country going to stay broke. It's going to stay f***ed up. The government going to stay having to hustle on the side to make some money because the government not just f***ing the money, but y'all f***ing up the money playing games in criminal and family court. And that's my answer to why, you know, black women and black men don't get along. And another thing I'm going to say to it, me personally, I'm going to speak to my personal, excuse me, I'm going to speak to my personal, um, from my personal views and opinion, y'all not natural no more either. You know what I'm saying? Y'all are running, running behind these trannies and these gay men to the point where real men don't, we don't want you. We're afraid of you. I'm going to just be honest. If you are... If you are uplifting your competition, right? Look at homosexuality. Like this ain't no disrespect to Atlanta, but look at Atlanta. Look at look at Cali. Look at LA. Look at Los Angeles. Look at the cities where it's the most trannies and the most downloaded. It's women. Y'all the ones. Y'all the ones uplifting it. 
And I ain't saying everybody go outside and just wild on homosexuals, but what I'm saying is black women are constantly promoting their own competition. You know what I'm saying? You don't want us out here dating white women, and I can say I never had sex with a white woman in my life. This ain't no pun to white women, but I've stayed loyal to my race. I've never had sex with a white woman in my life, never even kissed a white woman. But imagine wearing a blonde wig every day, but then you, you are conditioning your son psychologically to be attracted to blonde hair. He's been watching you wear a blonde wig for 20 years of his life, and then he grow up and go get a white woman, and then you get mad at him, but you've been walking around the house like a white woman all your life. Uh, imagine going to get a breast, a breast implant or a butt implant and wear a weave, and then a girl go do the same thing, and now your son can't tell the difference, and, and, and you've taught him to be attracted to an ass or some breasts, so he don't care who or what is on, and once again, the, the community is disenfranchised. Dis, uh, so what it's coming down to is black women have to stop perpetuating the ideologies that are actually not just working against them, but working against their children. And most of the times, that's what we're in the house arguing with black women about. We're arguing with them because they don't listen. The only time black women listen is when they want you to fight for them. But... I don't mind fighting for you. And I'm speaking on black women because I'm black. I'm pretty sure other races of people do it too, but I'm only speaking towards mine. So please don't jump in the comments saying, well, it's all women. It might be all women, but I'm only speaking to the women that I love uh, and look like. We don't mind fighting for y'all, but it's just, don't have me out here on no dummy mission. And don't be disrespecting me and then think you're going to fight for me. Don't be, don't be getting, I know the shit y'all do. I grew up in the hood. Break up with you, you will call the job, you will call the job 50 times in a row and annoy that manager so much that the manager fired it. I know what y'all do. Y'all call POs. It happened to me. You get into a new relationship. Y'all will harass the new girl so much. Man, if I could just count on my feet. Do y'all know how many women I didn't talk to where they be like, Pharaoh, I really like you. I, I, I really feeling you, but I'm falling back because your baby mother's is just too much. Ooh. Like, so y'all will harass out of a life and it's just a myriad of other shit I could go on down the line. And all we, all the average black man is asking you to do is just listen. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, and the real issue is because y'all will listen to every other but the black man. Right. But then y'all want us to, y'all, we the first y'all want us to go combat somebody for you. We the first, when the police is security or somebody bothering you outside, you want us to step to them. Police, Sandra Bland, your ass, you want us to step to them. Anything happening in the world, you want us to step to somebody, but you don't want to give us the respect as a stepper. It's right. like it's like a it's like having a grimy general. It's like you just abusing your soldiers all day, but then you want them to go to war and have high morale when it's time to go to war. But you've been telling them names the whole time. So it's the same thing. It's like black women, y'all dogging us, saying sh just get money, three o four, scamming, wop de wop, and y'all don't have no respect for us, no day of the year. But then y'all want us to go on dummy missions for y'all, and not and I'm in right here. That is why we're arguing with y'all in the house because it's coming down to the fact that. As much as y'all ask for us, even though y'all asking for unfair, y'all are probably the most horrible business people on the planet right now. Y'all won't even give us the simple respect of just speaking to us nicely. Most of y'all talking in like they five years old or y'all cussing out over every little thing. Some of y'all don't want to give a no respect. Y'all wait till friends and family come over to get the wilding. Some of y'all, we can't take y'all nowhere. Y'all wait until y'all, I don't know why the f some of y'all do this. Y'all wait good and well till they get the public and get the wilding. You feel me? I don't know why the f y'all do it, but y'all know y'all do it. And y'all just wow out on it, but y'all don't do that with no other race. You don't ever see, I've never seen a black woman that's what a white man call his job and getting fired. I ain't never seen a black woman that's what a white man call his parole officer and getting fired. And I ain't saying they ain't never did it. I'm just saying I ain't never seen it. I ain't never seen a black woman with a white man get in public and be like, you start putting your fingers all in his face and wilding on him in front of his. But y'all wait till y'all get with us to do that. And I don't understand that. I ain't never seen you do that to no Spanish. And I done heard plenty of black women say, I want to date a Spanish person because they got good hair. And I ain't knocking their hair, but we got good hair too. But the point is, y'all give all of the brownie points to every other race of man but us. Y'all go to Dubai and do God knows what over there. We didn't all heard the stories. So y'all get around them Arabs and everybody else in the world and y'all get them the utmost respect. But y'all can't even have a uh, uh, y'all can't even, y'all treat us worse than y'all treat y'all little cats and dogs, literally, that y'all got in the house. Half y'all don't even talk to them dogs and them cats the way y'all talk to y'all y'all niggas or y'all baby fathers when y'all angry. I ain't never seen it. You feel me? Y'all violate 
in front of their kids. Y'all wait. There's so many videos I've seen on Facebook. I wish I could have just jumped through the camera. Y'all wait until they get in front of their kids and start cursing them out and dogging them. You don't give them no respect as a father. Then when, then when the kid gets 16, 17, you want them to jump in and be a disciplinary uh, entity. But how the they going to do that when the kid don't even respect them because you ain't gave them no respect. So now having hand-to-hand -hand boxing sessions with their son because you didn't raise sons against them. So it's to the point now where I had to ask myself, our, and I'm saying black American women because the only good relationship I've ever had with a black woman was with one that was not even from America. All my, all my other relationships with black women have been crazy. Ain't never been, ain't never treated me right. So I have to say now, our black American women the enemy because no disrespect to white people. I know I can't trust white people like that, but I never thought I wouldn't be able to trust y'all. And a part of me, as much crazy as I know white people do, a part of me still trust they ass over you. You know what I'm saying? I, uh, and that's how f it is. That's how damaged I am personally. That if I was paralyzed and I was in the hospital and somebody said, you want a white nurse or a black nurse, I would have to, I would have to deliberate on which one I want because of what I've been through with black women. I, I would have to deliberate on, if this get mad at me, is she gonna not bring me my pain meds? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, if this get mad, like I would have to deliberate on how grimy could this get if she get an attitude today, you know? So, that's just what it is. It's just what it is, I'm being honest. I'm not trying to down talk black women. I, like I said, I ain't never dated no white woman, but from just my personal experience, and if you go on the street right now and ask the average random walking up the street in America, how is, how is he being treated by black American women, whether it be his family or strangers or his exes? I like how you specify black American. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, he going to pretty much say the same thing. And so I'm just letting black American women know what you see on TV is not real. <clears throat> Law and order don't really work like that. So we need y'all to have our backs uh, against the judicial system. Stop just throwing us to the f***ing wolves. What else I want to say before we go to the next subject? Uh... Be mindful of how you talking to people. I don't understand why y'all. I don't understand why y'all do that. You know what I'm saying? Mothers cuss their sons out. We all see it. It ain't a fucking secret. It ain't like I'm making shit up. You can go to the average little league game right now. You know what I'm saying? And then it then got so out of pocket. It then got so out of control. You can go to a kid's practice, and the mother would get the co cussing the coach out if he yelling. But the last time I checked, this is football. You know what I'm saying? If you ain't running the lap. Your coach supposed to say run a lap, but you got mothers that'd be like, don't yell at him like that. So it's just like y'all is just totally trying to pipe down any form of masculinity. And then y'all have replaced us. I'm gonna say this too, because I, I wanna get this out too. Then then y'all got a trick. I I, I got a y'all y'all got a trick that I wasn't savvy uh, uh, privy to. One of them out of the two, but I'm privy to it now. Another thing y'all just be doing, and I mean is literally y'all go date bums. And then you would try to build a bum up. To make yourself have this, this image in the bum eyes that 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 you should be trying to build in a nigga that's established eyes, and then what happened is y'all y'all purposely are dating down because a nigga that's lower than you will accept you for your beauty, so now you never have to actually be a woman and follow lead because in his eyes you look like the leader because you the one that lifted him him up, but then you will come in my in my life or one of these niggas in the room life and be hell on earth and don't want to listen. And what I'm learning about women in America is y'all purposely don't talk to that's established and y'all purposely go talk to streets, which no disrespect to in the streets, but y'all ain't talking to that's, I don't know if it is, I ain't out here. I ain't snitching on nobody. But if it is out here doing millions of dollars for bricks of cocaine, you ain't talking to them, you talking to the crusty jeans. So y'all purposely going to talk to bums so that way y'all don't have to talk to because that's established. So that way you don't have to play the feminine role. And that's another trick y'all be doing. So if you go talk to a to where in his eyes, you the best he could get, then you don't have to, perf you can be lazy on your performance as a woman. Versus if you come talk to somebody that's in this room that's getting up, going to work, paying taxes, and now you gotta come pull your weight. So that's another trick y'all be doing. Another trick uh, I found out y'all be doing uh, where was I at with it? Okay, t dating lower on purpose. Um, what's another trick? Damn, it just lost my train of thought. But if it come to me somewhere in this interview, I'll give it back. But long well, story short, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say the reason I appreciate you specifying black American women is because you don't really see that from other 
like black women from the diaspora. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? That whether it's Haitian, um, straight from the motherland, you know what I'm saying? Jamaican. R Jamaican, any any Caribbean. Caribbean island, you know what I'm saying? Any 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 you know what I'm saying? Any black woman from anywhere else, it's like they're submissive. They cook, they clean, they mind their business. You know what I'm saying? And, and if they gotta work, they gonna work. They show their husbands uh, respect. You know what I'm saying? And they take care of their kids. You know what I'm saying? Like they, they, like with black women, it be like I say the relationship is hostile. And I'm not just solely uh, blaming them, but right. my observation from other races is that they know how to be women. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like you said earlier, a lot of, and when I say know how to be women, I do feel like, you know, you should know how to cook in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Right. Like that was a, I remember when I was growing up, the, 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 that was mandatory. You, you was, you know, holidays came up when we celebrated holidays. You was in the kitchen and I wasn't even allowed to be in the kitchen. You know what I'm saying? There was right. a time like that there. And that's not like that. Hey, real tone, there's some real money in the room.